the Game of Life podcast coming at you, where we bring to you the behind the scenes lives of NBA players, business savvy entrepreneurs, and top level performers in all fields of personal development. The podcast that helps you become the best version of you. The Game of Life, David Nurse. Here we go. Well, Welcome back to the Game of Life with David Nurse, where you just get better at absolutely everything. Maybe not. Probably nothing. You probably get worse. No, no, no. We're all about optimizing personal life performance, enhancing everything that you do in your day, finding more joy, finding what you are passionate about, and helping you reach the highest level of your field. And we do that in a variety of ways. We do that in bringing on NBA players and talking about how they got to where they are today, going behind the scenes in depth with them. Uh, Things you guys never get to hear anywhere else and you get to hear it here on The Game of Life. And we bring on just really cool people doing really cool things. Because what's better than that? Why live less than you can, really? Why hold yourself to a lower standard? Why not? Make yourself the best version of yourself that you can be. That's what my goal of this podcast is. And that's what my purpose and calling, I feel like it is, to bring all that to you. And today, we have a very special guest. We're joined on the podcast today by Kane Russell of Halo Neuroscience. So Halo Neuroscience is literally the next level of human performance. Not to mention they are the most stylish, swaggy headphones you can put on. So what it does is it increases plasticity in your motor cortex, strengthening existing connections between neurons uh, to form new functional pathways for your brain to process and progress the raw, unrefined movements um, in more efficiently. So basically creating more muscle memory yeah sorry to go really sciencey that i just blanked out and started talking anyways think about it like this let's say you are doing anything and you retain two percent of what you've just learned now with halo neuroscience and priming your brain to be ready to receive this information more efficiently you retain let's say more like 15 to 20 percent so it basically just maximizes your ability to learn and to retain information so we're going to jump in depth with Kane and he's going to tell us more about this way more sciencey than I can talk about he'll let you know how people are using it at the highest sports athletes baseball olympians the Navy SEALs, NBA players, NCAA championships, everything. And basically, Kane will just blow your mind literally and figuratively with everything he's talking about. And no, this is not the video game Halo, by the way. So without further ado, let's get it rolling. Here we go. Kane, Halo Neuroscience. What's going on? How you doing? Good, good. It's been... uh... It's been hectic, man. I mean, I, I don't know if you saw, but I uh, can't actually remember when we met you. Um, but did you see that UNC won the championship, obviously? Yep, yep. And, and so, yeah, that's our first NCAA championship here at Halo. That was pretty exciting. Wow. Uh, we had headsets on a bunch of the guys. And, um, yeah, this Giants thing just came out, so I've been spending a lot of time on that. Cespedes just bombed three homers in the same game. I saw that, he, yeah. He, he's one of the one of the guys we worked with through the whole offseason. So, and then I just launched this partnership with the University of Illinois, actually looking at Paralympic athletes. So that's been really cool. Wow. And then, um, yeah, we were just doing some stuff for the the Joe Gibbs. I think I told you guys about that partnership. So I've been yep. working a little bit on that. And um, anyway, how about you guys? How's it so, going? So basically you're taking over the world is what you can say <laughs> in short yeah. term. Well, well I, <laughs> it, it was good for me because I, I, I wore it um, – at night in the morning after the first time and i remembered what i did the day before so that's a big step in my muscle memory development oh cool nice yeah. <laughs> how's it been uh, like getting it to work and stuff all the contact stuff's okay yeah great man been great so far nice yep, and i got got more guys coming in next week so we we'll keep getting it on guys um seems like a lot of people are hearing about it too yeah do you uh any bets for these upcoming playoffs 
Um, like out of their bets, or I mean, the safe bet is Warriors Cavs. Yeah, which it probably be. will be. But to pick a dark horse, I'm going my dark horse. Real sneaky is Utah. Yeah, I haven't seen any of their games, but they're I like that team. Utah and Toronto, Toronto in the East. Yeah, yeah, we'll yeah. see, we'll see. Well, cool. Um, yeah, we'll jump into it, man. Um, appreciate you coming on. Thank you very much. Of course. I just want to get like give more info on this, like the science behind it, how how Halo works, uh, the technology, uh, just kind of like the the in depth information that uh, that Halo uses. Yeah. So the most important concept for Halo is called neuroplasticity. And this is how the human brain learns anything. Basically, repetition is food for the brain to create new circuitry, essentially to rewire itself. And this is true whether we're learning a foreign language, directions to a cafe, math, or how to jump higher. Mm -hmm. And the process by which the brain creates these stronger, more synchronous connections, neuroplasticity, is the process that we are able to affect with Halo Sport. Now, because we're applying stimulation to the brain's motor cortex, we're only really able to have an impact with this first product on movement-based learning. So that's strength, explosiveness, muscle memory, and endurance. Nice. Okay. Um, so this, this type, like, talk me through uh, a little bit about the, the muscle memory uh, development, the retention of the muscle memory compared to, let's say, if I'm not using it, compared to if I am using it. So I got, got yeah. it right here for me, right here too. Perfect. Everybody can see it. Nice. So the, the fundamental part of the brain that we're affecting with Halo Sport are, of course, neurons. Mm -hmm. These are the way, neurons are the way the brain communicates with with every other part of the body to start with. And so the way that a neuron works is that as you complete training repetitions, neurons in your brain will fire an action potential. Okay. Now, by applying electrical stimulation, we're actually depolarizing slightly the neurons in your motor cortex. What that means is that every neuron in your brain is negatively charged. By making the neuron less negatively charged, it becomes more likely to fire an action potential. In addition, because we're applying neurostimulation to a specific part of the brain, collections of neurons are depolarized that are close to each other. And as a result, neurons are firing action potentials together. And this is this magical moment in the brain that allows us to accelerate the rate that the brain learns movement-based training. The adage in neuroscience goes, neurons that fire together, wire together. Oh, I like that. Ah. Yeah. So, okay. And so from the perspective of how your brain learns, there's yep. really like the first phase is this encoding phase. Okay. So every time you're shooting a free throw, you're actually wiring your brain. You're a neurological engineer. Wow. And by wearing Halo Sport, more neurons in your brain are going to fire more action potentials for every single one of those free throw repetitions, which ultimately makes every one of those repetitions just a little bit more valuable. So if normally it would take you 100 repetitions to perfect the wrist angle that comes out of your shot release. Mm -hmm. We can actually make the number of repetitions needed less. Because each one is just a bit more valuable. Man, so, so you are basically saying, in in layman's terms, or breaking it down into my non sciency mode, that with Halo you can be way more efficient in your practice. Instead of practicing longer, you are practicing smarter. So instead of saying, "Hey, maybe I need to shoot a thousand shots a day." Um, now I can shoot two hundred, and I get more benefit by priming my brain before the workout with Halo. So you would get the same benefit at less repetitions or more benefit with the same repetition. Ah, gotcha. And I, I think that the really clear analogy here is familiar to us 
in a different part of our body that, that gets affected by training. So at the muscular level, we all know that if you drink a protein shake before you go into a workout, your muscles will respond better to that training. That training will be more productive for your muscles because they have the right preparation going into the workout. Right. Yep. Neuropriming is just a protein shake for the brain, right? Mm. We are prepping the brain so that the activity that you perform will be more productive, will be more beneficial towards the skill that you're trying to acquire. Okay. That, I like that analogy a lot. That makes a lot of sense. Because when you're thinking about it, you're trying to give yourself an advantage going into a workout or even like an energy advantage if it's a pre-workout. You know, like people take a lot of pre-workouts or Red Bull or something like that. This is this is the way to get your brain basically functioning at the highest level it can to retain all that muscle memory. Exactly. That's exactly it. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Score one science point for me. That's big time. <laughs> cool man that's that's really cool and then um i'm gonna keep going with my analogies so it'd be like then i'm plugging my phone into the computer and instead of just getting like two percent or three percent back from that workout i'm getting 20 or 25 percent something something more than i was without it Right, right. At the neuronal level, you're getting stronger, more synchronous connections between your brain and muscles as if you had a charger that was able to create a stronger, more synchronous electrical connection to your phone to charge it up quicker. Wow. Those words you just said there were neuronal, synchronized. Everything was great, man. <laughs> um, okay. Can you uh, like walk me through how I'd implement it on a daily basis? Uh, let's say for an athlete on a daily basis, how would they most benefit from using it? So you got to think about as an athlete, what is the core skill that you're trying to improve upon? Mm -hmm. Because the way that neuropriming works is we have an 80 minute window in which your brain benefits from each repetition just a little bit more as we discussed what scientists call a state of hyperplasticity where any repetition is more valuable to the brain. So let's say you're a basketball player who has a crack shot who having played basketball with you, David, for a couple of <laughs> minutes, I think you would fall into this category. <laughs> but at the same time, you feel like, man, I would really like to benefit from being able to move laterally more quickly. That's because, very true. Very true. <laughs> because I know that I can get, if I get my shot off, it's going in, but I got to be able to get it off. And the only way to be able to do that is to open up space for myself, either by covering more ground with a single step or by being quicker so that I cover more ground faster than other people can. Right. Yep. And so you would train that skill exactly as you normally would with the added benefit of applying neurostimulation for 20 minutes during your warm up. That's how long the neurostimulation session lasts. And then those 60 minutes right after the neurostimulation session has concluded is when you got to feed your brain repetitions to improve that deficient skill that's going to be the differentiating factor between ultimate success on the court or just the success that you currently have. So, you know, for me personally, when I was thinking about neuropriming, like I was just thinking about overall explosive strength. And so yeah. I would do my normal warm up, which is just movement prep, you know, like a TRX kind of warm up, light jogging, light weight, stretching, the same stuff that you would normally do. And then all explosive repetitions during the 60 minutes after that 20 minutes stimulation session. So we're talking things like box jumps, dumbbell squats and snatches, jump yeah. squats, anything related to the specific movement based skill that I'm trying to train. But to, to make a long answer even longer, uh, <laughs> if you were trying to make yourself better at shooting then you would just filter these 80 minutes through training designed to make yourself a better shooter, right? Yeah. So maybe it's a, you know just the basic shot drills that you know better than I do, but can you make, I mean, we have this drill that we, we do with, uh, with a couple of our guys, this 3-2-1 drill where can you make three shots in a row from five spots on the court, then two shots in a yeah. row, then one shot all across the court. And you know, these are the kinds of drills where you're feeding your brain quality, thoughtful repetitions that are ultimately going to be more beneficial to your brain and body 
when you're neuropriming during this type of training? I think that's hugely beneficial. I mean, just being a player development and shooting coach, uh, I, I think just the ability to know that you're going into the workout, that you are going to take as much possibly as you can from it to grow. And like you said, doing exactly the movements you want to get better at, like for basketball players doing their game shots at game speed, then it's almost like, okay, you've got the you've got the blueprint, you've got the test in front of you. Now you get to basically have that cheat sheet right there that you're working off of. Yeah, absolutely. That's I think that that is that is hugely beneficial. Yeah, I mean that doesn't make any sense why anybody wouldn't use it to me then. Yeah, I mean the big thing, especially with basketball, is like there's just so much you can improve as a player. And, yeah, and so the coaching and the thoughtfulness of your repetitions is really important because total transparency. If you feed your brain sloppy reps while you're neuro priming, yep. you will encode that movement in your brain. We're not offering you the opportunity to do the movements correctly. We're offering an opportunity to have these movements be encoded into your brain faster. And so any imperfect or sloppy training, uh, just as is true for building muscle, is the same for the brain. You've got to make sure that the repetitions that you're doing are ones that are high quality, exactly like you just described. Man, thank you for saying that. That's like my biggest, biggest belief is it's not practice that makes perfect. Perfect practice makes perfect. Absolutely. Yeah, one of the CrossFitters that I work with, that's her favorite quote. Her name's Camille <laughs> LeBlanc. Uh, she's number three in the world right now. And and that yep. was the first thing that she told me from the from the start and uh, just couldn't be better advice for any athlete. That's, that's, that's huge too. I'll say then perfect practice at game speed because you'll get a lot of players of it. Oh, hey, I got up 500 shots. I was in the gym for three hours a day. If you're just going through the motions, you're wasting three hours. So that, totally. Yeah, right on point. Love it. Um, how, about, how about for everyday walk of life? Like let's say like someone trying to develop their piano skills or just how it relates to everybody, the whole general public that they could use this. Yeah. Movement-based learning is what we can accelerate. Big time. So the keys here are things like piano playing is a fine motor skill. Yep. Chopping up carrots in the kitchen is a motor skill. Ballroom <laughs> dancing and perfecting your salsa technique is a motor skill. A surgeon who's trying to learn how to be more precise with their scalpel cuts is a motor skill. And so we're, we're offering only that. This isn't cognitive learning. This isn't anything about focus or poise or concentration. Mm -hmm. Any of the psychological aspects involved in sports performance or other types of movement-based performance is not within the realm of Halo Sport. It's all of these particular movement-based training, movement-based learning that we do that we can really help people with. And so on the performance side, this is where Halo Sport, I think, has been delivering a lot of value for people is understanding how they can move better, move more precisely, move more explosively. Or in the case of endurance, we work with a lot of cyclists, marathon runners, swimmers, is actually move for a longer period of time. So, yeah. So essentially, like it can help you out in every aspect of life. Like if I just want to be a better overall human being, I could increase my cooking skills. I could increase my dancing, music skills, sports performance skills. I could even like do like five good deeds a day for somebody and even be, remember those good deeds so I can do some more the next day. So basically you can improve every aspect of your performance movement life, right? It's only motor skills, but yes. And all we need are those repetitions, right? Yep. Nothing gets happened for free. It's yep. got to be delivered to the brain through repetition in order to have any effect. Love it. Awesome. Awesome. Um, can you share some results, uh, some results that you've guys seen, some tests that you guys have done, uh, just where you've seen it just really just uh, – exemplified in, in sports or the real life? Yeah, so we didn't do anything here at Halo until we had the data to back it up. Data came before product in every single decision that we made. And so it was a, a multi 
multifaceted process to really arrive at some of the data and results that were compelling. So the first thing we did was pretty boring. We just got people into our research lab eight hours a day, seven days a week, and tested thousands and thousands of people on specific skills like a piano chord task or a grip strength task and set up these research trials according to the scientific gold standard, which is double-blind, sham-controlled conditions where neither the researcher nor the subject knows who's getting real stimulation and who's getting subtherapeutic, essentially fake stimulation. Mm -hmm. And the research trials replicated the research that already exists. The field of research into transcranial direct current stimulation is about 15 years old. And so people like, you know, Podi and Nietzsche and uh, I'm going to butcher his name, but Copa Gemini, like these are guys who have paved the way for companies like us to replicate some of the results that uh -huh. they saw in a lab. So then once we had the results in a lab, then it was about taking it out to the actual field. Same thing, double blind, sham controlled conditions and testing within the actual training that some of these elite training organizations and teams do every day. So two examples that were some of our earliest the Michael Johnson Performance Center down in Texas was training athletes for the NFL Combine and really focused on building lower body strength and explosiveness. After 10 workouts, you saw the Halo Stimulation Group improve by about 12 to 14 percent versus the athletes in the control group who improved 2 to 4 percent. The U.S. Ski and Snowboard Association was another one of our earliest trials where they set up 10 workouts designed to build not just lower body explosiveness, but also skill. And so after 10 workouts, the athletes in the halo group improved by 32% versus athletes in the control group who improved by 18% in jump explosiveness. And then athletes wow. who are looking at skill get about a 20%, 28% improvement in the halo group versus like a 15, 14% improvement in the control group. So you know, these are big deltas that we can get for teams, especially people concerned at performing at the highest level. And everybody's going to improve when they train. That's not out of the question. We're not offering an ability for or saying that anybody can train and not improve without stimulation. It's just you get that benefit on top of the benefit you would normally see by using Halo. Yeah, that makes a ton of sense. And why, why would you not want that? Like, if you're going to train, why wouldn't you want to train at the extreme highest level that you can? Yeah. And, yeah. And since then, I mean, some of the stuff that we've been doing with athletes is is maybe what means the most to me uh, as mm -hmm. an athlete, formerly myself. I mean, I wasn't that good, but I certainly competed at the highest level I could. Uh, and so being able to deliver better training results for people, like one of the athletes that I've really enjoyed working with is TJ Carey in the NFL. This is a seventh round draft pick who nobody really gave a shot to being a starter. Uh, but we, you know, put a hundred pounds on his, on his squad, put six to eight inches on his vertical leap, you know, and he's one of the, the leading contributors now on the Raiders defense and one of the strongest guys pound for pound on his team. And uh, Emily, who is a, is a power lifter in the Bay area who uh, now owns a few world records since training with us. And, you know, these individual athletes who are helping out in addition to the teams is a big part of my role at, here at Halo. And, one of the things that I enjoy most about working here. And that's that, those are really cool stories for sure. So you so you're basically saying like if you put this on me back in the day, I'd still be playing basketball. <laughs> Maybe I'd probably be in the NBA right now. <laughs> so we need to rewind work. time. Can you can you create a time machine first and right. then we'll put Halo on me? Yeah, well, uh, maybe we could put it on you, you know, when you were really early, still doing your growing and add a couple of inches on you. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. what I need, man. I still blame the doctor for that. Tell me I was going to be big sticks. Yeah. Um, that's awesome. Those stories, those stories are super cool. That's why I, I'm just really excited to use it with my players. And because I'm really big on, like, I put everything I have into the players that I work with and overall – their development. So if I can help them develop to the highest level and, and them knowing that I just care about them immensely in their careers, that's, that's just such an added bonus. And it comes for what it's worth comes through so much meeting you. And I think it's one of the neatest parts about what you've committed your career to do and just super inspiring. Appreciate it, man. Thank you. That's your, your inspiring. That's awesome. Um, what about like uh, teams you've been working with players you've been working with? Uh, you just won your first national championship. Like you're, you're racking in the awards. You're going to have to start like have a whole trophy case here pretty soon. 
Yeah, some of this stuff gets to be difficult because teams are so private about their competitive advantage. Yeah, for sure. Players are as well. But the for stuff sure. that's out there publicly, uh, San Francisco Giants we've been working with for a while. Uh, they have Halo Sport installed across all of their training facilities, all six affiliates. Uh, the U.S. military is another one that's very public. We, they're oh. one of our oldest customers. Uh, so all of the special forces have been using Halo Sport for the longest. So, you know, everybody from the SEALs to the Green Berets on down. Um, the U.S. Ski and Snowboard Association, which I mentioned, they're another one of our longstanding partners and people that we've enjoyed working with. Uh, Joe Gibbs Racing is another industry that I find really compelling. Maybe we can get into that if you're interested. But, yeah. you know, understanding how to affect pit crew performance has been one of the challenges that we've been partnering up with them to figure out. And then on the individual athlete side, so the 2016 Rio Olympics was an awesome opportunity for us to showcase Halo and, and how we were helping athletes. So, you know, Mikel Thomas is a hurdler from Trinidad and Tobago who uh, is uh, – watching him train is, is amazing. The, guy, the mm -hmm. guy just puts in an unbelievable amount of work. Uh, Samantha Achterberg is a modern pentathlete who uh, represented the U.S. down in Rio um, – and, uh, and then the NFL season was another opportunity for us to showcase some of the athletes that we're working with. So a guy like Demario Davis, who's the captain of the Cleveland Browns, has, has been a pleasure to work with. And uh, some of the folks that I mentioned earlier, you know, TJ and Emily and uh, Andrew Herbert is another power lifter who I actually went to grade school with. Uh, so it was fun to reconnect with him. And, um, yeah, some of the really cool stuff that came out recently um, – Giannis Cespedes was featured in a video on ESPN training with a partner of ours, Mike Barwis, who uh, has been a special advisor to the New York Mets now for a few years. And Giannis just bombed like three homers in the same game. So we were excited to see that. And those who were watching the national championship closely uh, would have seen Halo on a few of the players during warmups for the UNC basketball team. And uh, kudos to them. I mean, we certainly won't take credit for any of their success, but are happy to um, – do what we can to help these teams and players reach their goals and, and reach the heights that they want. Wow. That's, that's so cool. It is, and it's so cool hearing the passion in your voice and seeing it when you're talking about these teams that you've, that you've worked with and, and how humble you are with it. Um, basically it's, it's like every team at the highest level of every sport you guys have touch points with. I mean, if, first of all, if, if the Navy SEALs are doing something, I'm listening. If Olympic athletes are doing something, I'm listening. The San Francisco Giants who win the the World Series every other year, yeah, I'm listening. So, man, that's really cool. I mean, I, I know it's only going to keep growing for you guys, and and I know personally, I'm I'm like I'm a big believer in it. I, I know I'm going to work it, use it on my players, and and just really excited to see the the growth that they have um, as in development because I'm just. Try, trying to help them in every way I can so if I can see them be more efficient, even better. Yeah, we just actually, for some of the basketball stuff, we just published two blog posts that might be interesting for you to take a look at or any of the, the people yeah. who follow you. Uh, one is written by Lachlan Penfold. Okay. He was the head of uh, sports performance and sports medicine for the Golden State Warriors when they went on their 73-win season. He outlined some athleticism drills that he really likes pairing with Halo Sport to improve quickness, agility, explosiveness. And then um, another one of the, the trainers that we work with who works with NBA players outlined some shooting drills that he really likes. Uh, he works with guys on the Trailblazers, the Orlando Magic, uh, the Golden State Warriors. So there's some of those shooting drills on there, which I'm sure, uh, you know, David, you have a, a bunch that you would recommend as well. But that kind of stuff is, is we're trying to put out there and help give people guidance on how they can activate their training with this type of technology. That, that's great. That's going to give me the extra advantage because I, I already think that I can help players develop their shooting and and become better shooters. But now with this, too, I've got I've got a few guys that like if they can become better shooters they could be potentially max deal players in the NBA. So and that's be my little secret in my back pocket. Yeah, and those stories, I mean, that just means so much to us, the opportunity to to have people who are experts like you thinking about this technology. I mean, we're we're only really offering a technology, but the training and the repetitions and the hard work comes from people like yourself and the people that you work with. And so whatever we can do to help guide you or give you advice on how to best deploy this type of technology, you know, we're happy to do.
Definitely appreciate that, man. Um, definitely appreciate that. What about uh, what about uh, going to the future of Halo? So I know you're talking about where Halo is going uh, coming up on the next round that that you guys have coming out. Can you speak a little bit on that? Our goal is to be a neurotechnology company that really helps people, both for sports, excuse me, for performance reasons as well as medical applications. So. That's every single product that we put out. That's our vision for the product and what we want to accomplish. And so when you think specifically about this first product, on the performance side, motor skill improvement, strength, explosiveness, muscle memory, endurance. You know, and on the medical side, something like stroke is a, is a really important, meaningful application of this technology. And, of course, there's a lot of work that we have to do to get the proper approvals for a medical application of Halo Sport. But we're working hard to get that done because helping all people is really the mission of the company. Yep. And uh, our two founders are both doctors. Uh, one's a medical doctor from Stanford, another a biomedical engineer from Tulane. They built this implantable neurostimulation device for people with epilepsy prior to starting Halo. And so that's our charge. So Halo is just our first product. We're early in development on product number two. I can't share too much about the application <laughs> yeah. for it, but it's really exciting. We're going to be doing our best to make neurostimulation accessible to anybody and and really able to provide value to people in, in the way that they're learning and the way that they're living and in the way that they want to reach their potential, to unlock their potential. That's that's our goal and that's our charge and that's what we're going to work hard every day to deliver on. Yeah, that's you're just on the, on the cutting edge. It seems like you're just, I mean, touching the surface with it, how it can reach everybody in everyday life coming out. Like it's... It's almost like they say you only use a certain a certain percentage of your brain, and with you guys, you can just reach even more your brain capacity, your memory capacity, your everything. Like the movie, like the movie Limitless. They use right. the whole brain. That's right. my goal, and I think I think that's what you guys are coming with. Shout out to Bradley Cooper, great work. <laughs> but uh, yeah. yeah, I think the thing for me is is as an athlete myself, like. I always knew about muscular performance. I knew about hypertrophy and I knew yeah. about how you got to, you know, break down to build back up. I also knew about cardiovascular performance. I knew that I needed to transport oxygen to my muscles more efficiently and that all the running up the rocky steps, which was probably my biggest motivator, <laughs> would help me overall. And, and then even once I got to college, you know, sports psychology became something I was really interested in. Just – how focused you are going into a game. Are you mentally prepared? Have you watched film? Have you read through the scouting yep. reports? Yeah. But he, neurological performance, like the connection between your brain and muscles, is something I just never really heard about in a formal context. And I think would have been really valuable to me when I was training and trying to reach For sure. my own career's limits. And so this is the perspective and education that we want to bring to the market. And uh, and I think it's, that's the, that's the key here, right? Is that the brain, no matter how big your muscles are, no matter how many fast twitch muscle fibers are in your calves in, in, in order for you to like dunk or do whatever it is, like none of that matters without the brain. None. Yeah, man. I think you hit the nail on the head right there for sure. The biggest, best tool you can have is the brain. And, and even at the, like the highest level where I see with these NBA players at the highest level, it all comes down to the small little details to separate good to great players. Um, just like, like the film study or the, uh, just knowing where your shots come from, where your movements are. So any way to be a separator to these guys and that work, that, that, that could be the difference in an all-star versus non-all-star. It could be the difference in, in the league versus overseas could be the difference in generational wealth as well, just these little small details. Um, I, just, I just think you guys are a huge, huge piece of that going forward into the future of personal development. Thanks, man. I, I mean, I think one of the most famous neurological engineers in the basketball world, without him even knowing it, is Ray Allen. When he hit that shot to, to oh, win, the, uh, win the game for the Heat after uh, – Oh, man. Chris Bosh, I guess, yep. got the rebound. Yep. Like, if you watch the film, Ray Allen's not thinking about that shot. He's nope. just doing it because he's done it a million times before. And a lot of people, I think, assume that somehow your muscles have that capability to take two steps back and then propel yourself off the floor <sighs> and then shoot a shot that you shoot with your hands. 
And that somehow like the brain's not involved in that. But Ray Allen manufactured that game winning shot just by doing the repetitions over and over and over and over and over and over and over again. And he was setting up the neural circuitry that he needed in order to be able to win an NBA championship. And that's what basketball training is all about is so that you don't even have to think about it. Your muscles are just acting on their own. And that's a signal that initially gets developed in your motor motor cortex and inevitably gets pushed down into your spinal cord. And that's like basketball nirvana. We've all been there. And we're stopped. We stop thinking about like, do I have to bend my knees? Do I have to spread my fingers? Do I have to keep my elbow in? And we just do it. Right. And that's, I think, the power of really committing to training and hopefully by applying a technology like this, like it becomes even more beneficial and valuable to people who put in that hard work. Right there with you, man. That's that's when the game slows down for you. When they get you, when you're not thinking and you're just doing, that's the muscle memory. That's spot on, man. I, I love it. Um, yeah, thank you very much for that. That's, that's that's super insightful, super insightful, super sciency too. So all the people out there that just love to get in depth and sciency, this is this is big time for them. Um, yeah, hey, we have a bunch of papers on our site for people who really want to dig in on that stuff. Uh, it's it's fascinating to see how an industry really comes to be over the course of 15 years. I mean, yep. not to get too into it, but we went from like zero papers in 2003 published into this science transcranial direct current stimulation to well over 2,000 just 10 years later. Wow, man. That's technology. That's innovation. That's neuroscience. I mean, this is the, the stuff that people have been really thinking about. That's really that, that, that's really cool. And can can you tell me more on that? Where everybody can find you guys, where they can learn more about you, and and uh, we'll, we'll link to all this in the show notes and everything. But it's yeah, where where anybody can get more Halo, HaloNeuro.com or HaloNeuroscience.com is our website. We, we try to put as much information as we can on there. And then my email address is just you can reach me marketing at HaloNeuro.com. Happy to follow up with anybody who has specific questions. For sure. Awesome, man. Thank you for the time. I really appreciate it. Like this is this is just gets me juiced up. Anything player development gets me juiced up. Any way that I have potential to have a higher vertical leap, maybe gets me juiced up. So I'm in. Likewise, thanks for the time. And uh, I'm not sure your listeners will be able to relate, but Danny, who, who you got to meet. He ended up twisting his ankle uh, and not being able to play me one on one. He's he's escaping his responsibility, but I'm going to get him here. <laughs> he knows how much you've been using Halo and getting getting your shot down, so he doesn't want to mess with you anymore. Right, right, right. So I'll get him one of these days. <laughs> hey man, I really appreciate the time. Thank you so much. All right, David, take care. All right, David, take care. All right, Kane. See you, man. Bye.